recording, which is a good thing. So uh, we have quite a few announcements because of that. Um, so one is, it, uh, please plan to stay after worship. We have a special congregational meeting um, immediately after worship. So if you are able, please plan to stay for that. Um, also, after that congregational meeting, uh, I saw Tracy right there. Tracy, you guys are going to be making chicken pot pies in the kitchen, from what I understand. So, if you, um, so after the congregational meeting, if you can stick around and help with that, that is all for the fall fair that is coming up. And um, also, if you would be willing to um, take some baked good items home, like flour and sugar and chocolate chips, all of that and bake cookies for the cookie walk at the fall fair, that would be wonderful too. There is a sign up sheet to put your name down and what type of cookie that you are going to be baking um, on that table with the sugar and flour over there. Um, what are the other pieces? So the other piece I want to make sure, um, it's just a reminder that um, our October Stories and S'mores was actually postponed to next Sunday on Halloween. So, fingers crossed that it will be a little bit warmer outside next Sunday, um, that we can do one last outdoor uh, worship service. It's Reformation, so a great time to have a campfire. And then the hope is, is I know um, one of the our girl Boy Scout troop will be here to hand out some ribbons, and kids will come around after worship to trick or treat. So if you're going to be here, if you don't mind picking up a bag of candy, um, that you can hand out to kids um, it'll be really fun and then from then on no more deciding week to week we'll be inside for the, the winter but it would be nice to get one last um, outdoor service in um, and then John um, well I should say any other announcements or anything that people realize that I'm forgetting all right so then John wants to rehearse we are going to Sing our uh, gospel acclamation in a round, and I will turn it over to him. <laughs> the last time I did this was many years ago with Amazing Grace, which you can actually sing us around. And I did it with the congregation, and we did it in two parts, and then four parts. And one of the lovely women in the church comes up to me and says, If I wanted to do this, I'll be in Girl Scouts. So, welcome to Girl Scouts. Our gospel acclamation is actually around. And what I'm going to do is ask you to sing it this morning as a round, which means we're going to have a dividing line right about here, and this side will start, and then this side will come in a little bit later. And I have drafted Sue Allaire to help me show you how it goes. So this is how it goes. Listen to the word that God has spoken. Listen to the word who is blessed. Listen to the word that began creation. Listen even if you don't understand. Listen to the word that God has spoken. Listen to the word that began his hand. Listen to the voice that began creation. Listen if you even don't understand. Sorry, twice, twice, that's okay. All right, so there you have it. Thank you. Alrighty, so we'll see how that goes. Got our practice in, right? We'll get there. Sounds like you have much hope. Why it doesn't sound? You'll get it after a couple of years. <laughs> There's always hope, Tracy. You, I know at this point you guys are gonna knock it out of the park. And I'm probably not gonna sing because I'm scared that this one mic gets only my lone voice on Facebook Live, so I'll be though it's all on you guys, because I'm not I'm scared that I'll be pulling a solo on Facebook Live, which nobody wants. Um, so anyway. Well let's take a moment to take a deep breath to center ourselves for worship this morning by listening to the praise.
Please stand as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins in the, to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, like lost sheep we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace in Christ Jesus, God makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. Let us join in singing.
Jesus and his disciples and a large cloud were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet. But he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go. Your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. Please be seated. At my former congregation, there was Pastor Jim, who was the care of sick or dying or homebound. It was Pastor Jim that you wanted. He just really had this gentle spirit about him. He was a great listener, and whenever you were in his presence, you just really felt valued and cared for. So he was just perfect at that role as care pastor. And so he, most of his career in the United Methodist Church before he retired, um, he spent um, his ministry outside of Washington DC in the Maryland in the Bethesda area and so he happened to be a pastor right out of Washington DC during the civil rights movement and I remember him telling me how difficult that time was to be pastor in especially in that place for him you know he was there when dr. Martin Luther King jr. was gathering mass crowds on the National Mall and casting this vision of what our country can be. And it was a vision that many were thankful for and embraced and that many were not very happy about as well. And so he would preach about Dr. King and the civil rights movement as this was happening in our country because he saw this as one that was a positive change and one that the church should be involved in because it was leaning on the side of God's kingdom and it was part of what it meant to be a follower of Jesus. Plus, I mean, it was a major thing happening in our country, so how do you ignore this big thing that is happening right there? And he got in trouble for preaching <laughs> on it. Some folks in his congregation sat him down and told him that he needs to stop bringing up Dr. King in his sermons because he was too controversial. His uh, counsel told him that um, there were some folks who gave quite a lot of money and they're threatening to stop giving money if he doesn't stop preaching about Dr. King and this uh, civil rights movement. His counsel said, just please stay quiet about this. We're not ready for it yet. People just will get there, but they're not there yet. But Jim always told me that he didn't stay quiet. He continued to preach about it, and it was a really, really hard time for him as pastor because he saw this as something that was good for the country and something that followers of Jesus should be standing up for. And so for, even though his congregation was uncomfortable and not quite ready for it, he couldn't not talk about it. And you know, that's a piece of history I think sometimes we don't talk about as in the Protestant church. You know, the civil rights movement to us now kind of feels like a no-brainer. Of course people of color should have equal rights and opportunities as the rest of us, but when we were in the thick of it, that wasn't a no-brainer. That was something that was really hard. So a lot of churches stayed silent especially white Protestant churches, stayed silent during this time in our history. Um, and so, you know, and the other piece of it too is that a lot of people at the time, they kind of saw that, this race issue, as a social issue, 
and not an issue that the church should be dealing with uh, because that didn't have place in the church. And so some, they kind of saw that, like, yes, everybody should be treated fairly, but they disagreed on how that should happen. Like, should the government have a role in ensuring that that happens? And so it was tricky for them to kind of, you know, navigate their way through. And, you know, it's interesting because Dr. King obviously comes from a black church tradition. And their understanding usually is, is that people's condition in society is not separate from their spiritual life. So if in society you are struggling to have a place, your spiritual life is also struggling as well. They see both of them as linked, which, right, makes a lot of sense when you hear what Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was preaching at the time. Um, and so Dr. King wrote what he called an imaginary letter, which is what he imagined that Paul, the writer Paul would be writing to the church at the time of the civil rights movement. And he writes in that letter, I understand that there are Christians among you who try to justify segregation on the basis of the Bible. Oh, my friends, this is blasphemy. This goes against everything that the Christian religion stands for. I must say to you, as I've said to so many Christians before, that in Christ there is neither Jew nor Gentile, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for we are all one in Christ Jesus. And so again, in our gospel reading, we see someone who was marginalized at the time. And for this blind man on the side of the road, he in fact has three strikes against him that puts him on the margins. He was blind, he was a beggar, and he was the son of someone who was defiled and deemed as unclean. So he had three things working against him that he wasn't um, one of the respected folks in society. And you know, it is also all comes after, as we've been seeing over and over again in our gospel readings the past few weeks, about how Jesus is kind of preaching what it seems to be pretty clear, but the disciples keep not understanding what Jesus is saying. So here you have someone who is blind on the side of the road, and in some ways you have the disciples walking along Jesus, and they're pretty spiritually blind along the way too. I mean, what happens is you see that Peter doesn't understand what it takes for Jesus to be the Messiah, you have the transfiguration where the disciples with Jesus are up there on the mountaintop and they don't understand that they want to stay on the mountain, right? But they don't understand that Jesus' work is actually taking place down the mountain as well. The disciples, you know, can't see the importance of prayer and healing a boy with an unclean spirit. They are arguing about who is greatest when actually what makes you the greatest is to be servant, right? We don't see the importance of little children around them and want to kind of push them aside. And they don't see that, in fact, Jesus is telling them that they need to serve. And so all of that happens right before we find ourselves here in our gospel reading today. And the ironic part is, the guy on the side of the road, he gets it, right? He understands. He just sees... Jesus, and he cries out and he says, Son of David, have mercy on me. But then there's that important part right after, right? What do the people around him do when Jesus says, Son of David, have mercy on me? They hush him. They tell him, be quiet. Because what that man is saying, calling Jesus Son of David, is risky. It could get somebody killed. Because it's a political statement that that man is making and it's a risky political statement that he is making too so and plus this is a guy that shouldn't be calling out to jesus he's not deserving of calling out to jesus either right so they hush him and they want him to be quiet because they're not ready to hear what he's saying and so you know i think in some ways those folks on the side of the road with the blind man the folks in churches during the civil rights movements, 
um, the disciples who just kept not understanding what Jesus was telling them, you know, I think they're all kind of doing the same thing in their trying to hush and quiet down the inbreaking of God's kingdom because it's too risky and it's too controversial. And yet, so Jesus hears the blind man, right? Jesus stops because he hears him and he tells the disciples to go and to get him. And the man takes off his cloak and he comes right over to Jesus. And he asks Jesus what he is hoping for. He wants to be able to see. And so he does, right? Jesus heals him. He's able to see. And then it doesn't say that he goes back to his spot on the side of the road. He leaves Jericho and he goes and follows Jesus and probably was there alongside Jesus when Jesus walked that hard road into Jerusalem too, right? And so this struggle between the church and social reform and how all of that fits into our faith is not one that just remains there on the side of the road to Jericho and not one that remains in the civil rights movement. It's something that we struggle with a lot, I think, today too. And our attempts to figure out what it means to be faithful Christians in this time and in this place. And, you know, if we're honest, I think sometimes we too can be spiritually blind. <clears throat> like the disciples, like that crowd that was alongside that road too, and we can be afraid to really take a risk for others as well. So I'm going to ask, what, what are your spiritual blind spots? Where do you need to have your sight restored? How does your heart need to be literally broken and cracked open so the Holy Spirit can be at work? Like the blind man, are we actually willing to leave the side of the road? Are we actually willing to leave Jericho, leave the safety and the certainty to go along and see where it leads? Or do we just want to keep doing the same things? Do we have energy to get up and walk on that road? Do we have energy to push back on our desires and the folks who are trying to say, hush, don't bring that up? I'm not going to answer those questions for you, but I'm going to answer them for myself. And I invite you to take those questions and to pray about them and to think about them this week. And while you do that, I want you to also remember that with Christ, our blind spots are healed. Just like the blind man, Jesus also meets us with forgiveness over and over again, despite our being completely undeserving of it, and even in the midst of our spiritual blindness. You know, you, you probably have heard the term sin boldly from Martin Luther, right? And so sometimes I think we can see that as, you know, we're to go out and just sin willy-nilly, whatever you like, just go on out and do whatever. But really what Martin Luther is pushing us to is not the sinning part, but to see our But let your trust in Christ be stronger and rejoice in Christ who is the victor over death, sin, and the world. No sin can separate us from him, even if we were to kill or commit adultery thousands of times each day. Do you think such an exalted lamb paid merely a small price with a meager sacrifice for our sins? Pray hard, for you are quite a sinner, which is a true line, right? Again, Luther isn't telling us that we just go out and sin boldly to sin boldly, but it's that second part, to trust more in Christ, that it is in Christ that we are saved, that that is where we find forgiveness, but also that we're called to look at our blind spots and see where the Spirit needs to be at work as well. Be a sinner and let your sins be strong, but let your trust in Christ be stronger, and rejoice in Christ, who is the victor over sin, death, and the world. Amen.
let us profess our faith and faith in the words, words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was dead. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Set free from sin and death, and nourished by the word of truth, we join in prayer for all of God's creation. Risen One, we give you thanks for congregations and ministries throughout the world that serve as centers of prayer and action, empower missionaries, teachers, healers, evangelists, and all who are sent to share your song of joy. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy One, we give you thanks for generous land that produces abundant harvests. Strengthen and protect our so all soils, from rooftop gardens to prairie farmlands, to patio planters to fertile valleys, and bless all who lovingly tend them. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Ruling One, we give you thanks for leaders of nations, who work to build up the common good, strengthen efforts of reconciliation among all nations, that peace extend in every di direction. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Healing One, we give you thanks for all who labor for the health of others. Comfort and strengthen all who struggle with chronic pain. Send healing and relief to all who are sick especially Claire, Cinda, Robin, Norma, Ron, Sal, Pam, Stephen, Joyce, Deirdre, Mary, Nathaniel, Dorothy, Sandy, Kelsey, Gerald, Barbara, Alice, Logan, Bradley, Weston, Jake, Nancy, Kevin, Davy, Diane, Jean, Mer, Donna, Sue, Mike, Donna, Ed, Carl, Lil, Paul, George, Brandon, Crystal, Dale, Wayne, Michaela, Deb, the McFaddens, Ben, Monique, Kathy, Ann, and Stan, and for all our homebound, Eugene, Ethel, Charlotte, and Byron. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Providing one, we give you thanks for all who provide for others. Inspire generosity in your people so that we carry out the work of making disciples of all nations. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Living one, we give you thanks for the saints who have increased our faith. Give us courage to follow in hope until you gather us all around your table of abundance. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Confident that you hear us, O oh God, we boldly place our prayers into your hands. Through Jesus Christ, our truth and life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share a sign of the peace.
pray. God of abundance, you cause streams to break forth in the desert, and manna to rain from the heaven. Accept the gifts you have first given us. Unite them with the offering of our lives to nourish the world you love so dearly. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to be our and It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. you granted the people your life. You entered our sorrows in Jesus, our brother. He was born among the poor. He lived under oppression. He wept over the city. With infinite love, he granted the people your life. And the night in which our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it. And he gave it to the disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup of wine, he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. O God, you are bread. Send your spirit on this meal. O God, you are bread. Feed us with yourself. O oh God, you are wine, warm our hearts and make us one. O oh God, you are fire, transform us with hope. O oh God, most majestic, O oh God, most motherly, O oh God, our strength and our song, you show us a vision of a tree of life with fruits for all and leaves that heal the nations. Grant us such life, the life of the Father to the Son, the life of the Spirit of our risen Savior, life in you now and forever. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. At this time, um, I just want to explain communion. Um, how it works is I will come around um, and give you a piece of bread, and then there will also be someone who will come around with um, small cups of red wine and of white grape juice. We just ask that you work your way from the out in to avoid touching um, each other's cups. Um, we also have a gluten-free option. If you are in need of that, just ask for that uh, when I come around. Um, but the most important part is that you know that you are welcome to receive communion here. Um, so all has been made ready and all are welcome.
Okay, stand as you are able. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of life and the gift of your body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. People of God, you are Christ's body, bringing new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.